Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is the card that I will be making today. I am using the Spellbinders APG Die of the Month to create this, um, I guess it's maybe a triple slider card. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a bit, but I, this is why I wanted to show um, the card to start just so that you can see where it's all headed and hopefully as I talk about how I'm making it you can sort of envision um, the final outcome. This is a large card. It's 8x8. Eight eight. I don't normally make cards <laughs> this big but I um, actually tried it on a 6x6 six six, but it did not work very well. Um, I just really needed more space and so I decided that I'll go ahead and supersize this card <laughs> and um, I, I think in the UK though or in Europe larger card sizes aren't uncommon so um, so I don't think it's it's comically large <laughs> but it's definitely bigger than what I'm used to making. This that I'm starting on here is a double slider. So this is basically a little um, double slider card uh, section here or interactive uh, mechanism. And I've used, there's the, um, I think it was a large day of the month that has the Easter um, bunnies that animate, they have the perfect die to cut out these little slits, which I find perfect for making double slider cards because they are, um, another name for it is a ribbon slider, and so it just cuts the perfect size slit for you to thread through some plastic to create this conveyor belt. And I'm using my red line tape to um, attach uh, everything together on this belt. So what I'm doing is moving the belt all the way to one end and then on the opposite end and the opposite side I'm going to uh, put another bit of red line tape and this is what my pull tab will be adhered to. And so the idea of this is that when you pull upwards the watering can will tilt downwards as if it's watering the uh, ground below and simultaneously flowers will grow upwards. So as you saw in the preview of the final card, everything um, works. It just doesn't work super smoothly. I was able to actually iron out a lot of the kinks, but I... I'm still scratching my head a little bit as to how to make this move um, super um, kind of easily. There's just a lot of things going on and so um, that does make it a little bit hard to uh, troubleshoot exactly what I could possibly do to make everything work. Um, better but it's it's a fun mechanism though so on the right we have a double slider or a ribbon slider on the left i'll just be creating a standard slider so i've got a um, slot that i've cut through both of these mechanisms are cut onto three inch high uh, 120 pound cardstock and the way that i make my sliders is i just punch three quarter inch circles um, the two full discs are cut from 120 pound paper and the two discs that I fold in half are cut from 65 pound. I've made lots of sliders on my channel so um, hopefully this uh, mechanism is familiar to you already. There's a lot, there's so much going on here and that's why I, I'm not, I know things are going by pretty quickly, but I just want to kind of show how I'm attaching all of these different, um, movement pieces. So here I'm attempting to connect my two sliders. So on my pull tab, I'm going to, um, connect this bridge piece between my double slider, which will attach directly to my pull tab. 
and my single slider on the left. And I'm gluing it. I glued that disc to the, um, just to that circle piece so that this entire bridge piece will now be able to move up and down, slide along with uh, the pull tab here. And I think part of, um, one of the things with sliders in general is that unless you're, you're sort of holding everything down and um, anchoring it as it would normally be, be anchored with adhesive down to your card base, um, it's it's hard to get that fluid motion. And so that's why every time I go to preview this, I'm always I'm always kind of trying to hold everything down as firmly as possible where I know I would normally put adhesive. And so um, part of the challenge is that there's just um, it's not just one mechanism that's moving, it's these two sliders and I'm about to add a, um, a I don't even know what it's called, but these are gonna be, it's going to be sort of a pivot um, anchor. So that's what allows the watering can to just tilt as opposed to move anywhere. It's not on a track, but it's actually going to be uh, rotating. And what I'm using is just some of my low profile foam and I'm being careful to only put it where, where I know, uh, nothing needs to move and, um, potentially get obstructed by that adhesive. So I've, um, I'm constantly assessing where, where I can put adhesive and you'll see me do that up until the very end even. I've got some grass that I've used the border dye, the border grass dye from that same um, bunny dye set that I had on screen at the very beginning. I'll leave links to everything if I can still find them in the description box below. But it cuts out this um, fantastic border, and it's um, and you can you can just continue cutting to lengthen it if you need because certainly eight inches wide is is wider than most cards and so I just did some repeat die cutting there. On the front here I've got some heavyweight acetate and this is the uh, nice sturdy stuff and I'm going to attach it to my ribbon slider on the front. So my pull tab is on the back of that double slider and my acetate stand is on the front. That acetate stand, which hopefully you can see a little bit better now that I've got my uh, cloudy background on top of it, that is what's going to pull down the watering can, um, and that's the motion that I want to see. I want to see the tip of the watering can rotate downwards, but the base of the can I want to just rotate. I don't want it to actually move anywhere. So I've poked a hole through my background piece. This cloudy piece here is going to actually hide my pull tab so that is not visible um, in the final card. And then I'm going to attach uh, just this disc to it as a, just a little bit of a spacer. That way um, that brad can um, uh, kind of move freely and it's not overly sort of pinched to the cardstock. Now, I um, am glad that I did that because later on I actually have to add a piece to that mechanism, but um, I'm going to go ahead and start anchoring my mechanic, um, all my slider mechanisms down because that's going to help me to sort of preview the motion of everything. So you can see now that I've actually glued it down, it's it's moving a little bit more smoothly. Not not as smooth of, as I would like, but definitely um, better. And what I wanna do is get this background, the cloudy background piece in as well. But again, I need to be careful to only put adhesive where nothing needs to move in order to make sure that I'm not obstructing anything. And one of the things that I think I can improve on if I ever do this again um, is I I think I left a little bit too much room between my pull tab and these strips of foam that I'm adding because the foam actually 
acts as a uh, kind of like a guide rail for that pull tab to um, travel uh, straight. And I think this mechanism would go a little bit more smoothly if it was, if the foam um, was a little bit closer, actually, because then you're um, going to be pulling more um, straight. And it's when you start pulling things at an angle that the mechanism doesn't move quite as smoothly because those angles, everything is so contingent on being, you know, straight and or perpendicular. And so it really benefits from the pull tab going, uh, moving completely straight up and down, which is hard to manage, uh, if you're just casually pulling. But if I had put the, um, adhesive, the foam adhesive a little closer to the edge of that, uh, pull tab, it would have restricted the amount of play, the amount of wiggle um, that you can actually, uh, or that it limits the angle, the different angles that you can be pulling up on that pull tab. So that's one one place I think I could have improved. Um, and so I'll go ahead and get this, uh, this part stuck down. Now note with my brad that the head of the brad is on the bottom. Um, and so once I glue this down, I won't have access to it anymore, but because the legs of the brad are on top, that actually, um, worked out well <laughs> for me because I, I did realize, uh, after I had already glued down that panel that I actually need to add, uh, something to that brad in order for my watering can to actually move the way that I want. So... Here I'm gonna just um, add a couple more layers of foam so that I can get everything as level as possible. And I've got um, another layer of my low profile foam on the top of my slider mechanism. And so that's going to um, give a little bit of space so that the flowers actually have a bit more room to move. And here's another place I feel like I could have improved. I'm, I'm so in love with my low profile foam that I, I reach for it all the time now. And I think I, this card would have benefited from standard, my standard foam anyhow. So something closer to maybe two or three millimeters thick on the front side of the slider mechanism because one thing that I know was getting, um, uh, causing a little bit of a hiccup in the movement was that the, um, edge of the grass was actually creating a catch point. So the flowers, um, pulling upwards doesn't seem to be as, as big of a challenge as pushing everything back down. And when things come back down, that's when they get potentially caught on other objects on the card. And in particular, the flowers were getting a little bit snagged on the grass blades. But I think if I had um, used thicker foam, then there would be more space between the flowers and that um, and the and the grass blades. So. So that might have improved or, um, might have reduced, you know, the, the amount of catching or, um, uh, sort of, uh, snagging. So the watering can, though, really easy to put together. The handle is a separate piece from the, um, spout. The spout, there's actually two, uh, additional dies right at the, at the head of the spout where the little holes are. So one die will cut out what you see as the darker gray. And then a second die will actually cut out the, the one that has all the perforated holes. And so what I'm doing here is I, I'm just snipping my acetate stand down to size. And I've got another piece of acetate that's going to attach from the, um, the brad that I poked through my cloudy background. 
And I'm going to attach these two pieces of acetate with another brad because recall the spout is going to move, but it doesn't move straight down. It actually moves as a um, in a little bit of an arc or a curve. And by using these two brads as sort of um, kind of that pivot uh, mechanism, that allows the um, the spout to move and and it will kind of rotate along those two um, anchor points. So what I'll end up doing is, um, this is just me previewing. So you can see I can pull up really easily, but pushing it back down is a little bit, a little bit trickier. And the other thing that I think um, would be beneficial is I only layered the pull tab with two layers of 120 pound cardstock. And, and I think I should have added a third just, just because that pull tab is moving a lot of things on this card. <laughs> so, um, so having it be a little bit sturdier, I think would have helped. To touch my watering can, I, um, was talking about other things as I was uh, doing it on screen, but I, I just put adhesive, um, on the circle disc. And so the watering can is only attached to that disc. It's not attached to anything else. And that's what allows it to freely rotate. Then my bridge piece here, I thought could benefit from, um, extra strength, extra layers. So I've added a few extra layers of 120 pound cardstock in order to um, have that um, be a little bit stronger and move a little bit more um, smoothly. So I've gone ahead and um, actually, you know, stamped out my pull here, rounded the corners at the top of that to make it nice and um, obvious that you're supposed to do something. And, um, so here comes the fun part of placing the flowers. So these gorgeous layered flowers do come in this month's APG, um, die of the month. And they're really, they're so adorable. You get them in two sizes. You can choose to, um, layer them or not. Um, they have, some of them have that extra detail, which you can cut out of a different color cardstock just to give some ideas of, um, like a little bit of shadowing. And, um, they all have that sort of, I cut them out of either yellow or green, but that sort of, um, the, uh, bottom portion of the flower that, uh, sort of attaches to the, um, to the stem. Although, you know, if you wanted, you could attach these the other way as well. And so it'll just look like the petals are sort of, um, I don't know if wilted is the right word, but you know, that they're, that they're, um, kind of, uh, folded down or tilted downwards. So I think you can, you can choose whatever orientation makes the most sense. But um, what I've decided to do is take another piece of strong acetate. And this was my way of trying to reduce some catch points by having one nice smooth surface because there's so much going on below that that skyline there. <laughs> there's a lot of different layers of cardstock. There's um, a lot of things moving around. And so by just having one piece of um, plastic that I can adhere my flowers to, then um, hopefully I won't have um, any catch points where those flowers can get hung up on, especially since I'll be using adhesive to actually um, attach the flowers completely down to the um, to the acetate if I can and and that's part of that's part of the challenge as well is that I wanted this to be nice and full and have a lot of flowers that are um, that all of a sudden kind of grow up out of the ground 
after, you know, when you pull it up. Um, but I wanted some flowers, I wanted them to be at different heights. I wanted some flowers to still be visible even before you pull upwards. And so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers going on. I even tried with that one to see if I could get a flower to go all the way, stretch all the way <laughs> across to the right. But as I mentioned, there's just a lot, a lot moving on this card. And so you have to really, um, constantly be testing the mechanism to see what um what gets in the way of that movement and and you know what the boundaries are for where you can attach things and so i've um gone ahead and and cut a few more of these stems because i originally didn't think I would need um, that many of them because I thought I could probably just cut them down to size since not a lot of the stem actually shows. But um, in the end, I added so many flowers and um, and it does travel up quite a bit. So um, so quite a bit of the stem is visible. So I'm gonna you know continue to try to compose this, but at the at the um, bottom here, I actually use just plain scotch tape to tape these uh, stems down to the acetate. Now remember, I know it's hard to see, but there is some clear acetate on this mechanism piece here. And um, and I do keep on, you know, moving things up and down just so that I can see what's, what's going to be visible when uh, the card is in its default state versus what will be visible when it's uh, fully extended. And again, as I'm attaching the stems to um, the flowers, um, I'm using liquid adhesive so that it's nice and permanent. But I um, I like to also add some scotch tape just so that I can I don't have to wait for it to dry, and the scotch tape will hold it in place so that I can continue to kind of compose my card. I sort of wish I had uh, cut the leaves of the flowers from a different shade of green, um, but I, I think it still looks okay. I, I just think it would have added a little bit more contrast if, if those leaves were maybe a smidge darker or something. Some, you know, a green that's kind of in between the color of the stems and the color uh, that they are currently. But um, that's sort of the least of, of what I was concerned about as I was making this because I did make this entire card on a six by six and it just, there just wasn't enough room for the flowers to come up. And, uh, and I wanted a lot of flowers to, to come up out of the ground. And so while it worked and in some ways, uh, worked a little bit better, it, um, it just wasn't, um, what I was going for. It's one of the rare times where where I've actually started a card uh, from scratch uh, and completely redid it. Um, a lot of times you can you can save a card, but in this case, I just felt like the six by six. It just there was no saving it really in order to to get this nice full um, look here. And one thing that I would definitely recommend if you are going to do something like this, um, you know, glue as much down as possible because, because there are going to be things that will catch on, um, one another, especially, especially the grass. So uh, this is where I was saying if I had used thicker foam in order to, um, attach the grass, to the top of my mechanism pieces, I would ha I would not have nearly so many catch points with these flowers. But because the flowers just just have so many, um, you know, all those little um, you know, uh, petals and everything, there's just a lot of places, a lot of potential for it to get snagged on something. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Is I'm using my dotty tape runner to get as much adhesive onto um, these flowers, especially each of those individual petals and the and the leaves as well, because those are those are pr 
problem areas in the sense of um, places that can potentially catch on um, or snag on other things that are on the card. And so that was that was my major challenge. Um, the the mechanisms themselves, I think, worked out really well in terms of having the double slider attached to a single slider attached to um, uh, whatever the watering can me mechanism is with the uh, pivot uh, points. And so all of that actually just in terms of engineering <laughs> worked out fine. It's just in this final phase here, I think, um, you know, it, it, I wanted a little bit, maybe too much out of this card, but I love how full it is and how, um, these flowers really spring up. And while I was previewing everything, it was, it was hard to know that it would get caught up on, on the grass and snag on the grass blades. Um, until the grass was already adhered and and had uh, presented itself as a problem. I think also the other thing is, is that if the grass did not have all of the, that texture, like if you cut just a, um, like a hilly, you know, um, line with a smooth cut, I don't think uh, there would have been a problem either. So that would, that would have been the other solution is to not, to not actually use the border die to, um, get all of that grassy texture, but instead, uh, just cut a straight line. And maybe if I still wanted that, uh, grassy texture just to layer up, maybe on top of this, um, like have this piece be a smooth cut. And then layer on top of this um, another piece of uh, green that is um, that does have that grassy border, and separate those two layers with uh, another layer of um, low-profile foam. And that way, again, it's just a matter of getting enough distance between all of those flower leaves and petals and the top edge of the grass so that the the leaves can actually retract back below that grass line and um and not get caught up on it now one thing that i discovered and i was able to fix is um for this to move a little bit more smoothly i did need to anchor down my mechanism a little bit now on the um left and right of the mechanism that's pretty well glued down but i actually did not put a, um, any adhesive on those two the double slider and the single slider mechanism piece i didn't put any adhesive um on the inner edge and so i can't remember if if my um camera cut out or not but I did end up having to glue those down a little bit more securely, and that definitely helped. So you can see here, my my flowers are getting snagged right right there on that grass, and um and so I recognized it as a problem, but I just wanted to move on to something else. Um, as I tried to troubleshoot the issue um in my head for a little bit, which is what I what I like to do if I if I come across something that's presenting as an issue. I will just kind of move on to something else as I think about a solution and then, and then circle back to it. So one of the things that I thought, um, would improve the composition of this card is to actually put some flowers in the foreground because there is that such a large, you know, section of grass there. It's about, uh, three, well, over three inches because it's hiding the mechanism piece, which is three inches tall. And so, um, so I decided to add some flowers, um, to the front. And then here I'm just going to complete the actual card because this card base is eight by eight, which, um, you know, and, and it is from 120 pound weight cardstock. So I've cut one piece to eight and a half by eight and just scored half an inch so that I have a half inch uh, tab or glue tab at the top there. And then I cut another piece to uh, just shy of eight inches by eight inches. Um, and the reason why it just needs to be just shy 
is, um, and I'll take it to my trimmer to trim off a little bit here, you lose a little bit of um, the height of this because of the fold. So if you cut it to maybe seven and seven eighths, then, um, then I think you're good. So seven and seven eighths tall by eight inches wide. And I wanted to put a little bit of a sentiment on here, but I didn't, I didn't know how bold to go with the sentiment. Uh, I thought maybe uh, adding a glimmered sentiment would be nice, but I decided on small because there's just so much going on with the uh, spring colors and everything that I uh, thought maybe let's keep the focus on on that and keep the sentiment um, kind of small and so I just chose the little happy birthday and so as you can see here when you pull up so much going on so you've got the watering can that moves down the flowers that come up and um and that watering can you know tilts a little bit and so it's it's fun it's not a super smooth mechanism um and i think the other thing now that i think about it that um also weakens it is the plastic that's part of the conveyor belt because that's also like a very soft element so I think next time when I try this, I might double up on that plastic and make it a little bit stronger. But all in all, I'm I'm happy I figured it out. I definitely think there's room for improvement <laughs> on this, but I still wanted to share it because I think it's an interesting um, mechanism and concept. I hope you did too. Um, if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you'd like to catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Bye.